I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here with Intermountain Christian News and Christian Newspaper Association here in Washington, D.C. What a day today, Thursday, October 12th, 2017, with a question to uh, General Kelly today, which you can, by the way, see on YouTube. And I am here today with Congressman Doug Ladborn of Colorado. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad that we could have our conversation. Well, you know, it, it's been a really exciting day here at the White House, uh, miraculously getting to address uh, with a question in, in the White House today, and uh, we, we, we have talked about a very important issue which will appear on YouTube later, is about your concerns about UNRWA. And, uh, Absolutely, and thank you for making this uh, a highlighted issue. People who are taxpayers in the U.S. or Christians who support Israel need to be aware of the abuses that the U.N. is unfortunately taking advantage of with the money that we send them. Yeah, I know uh, we can we can talk later about that uh, more in a detailed video later, but it, it's quite something here to, to uh, address uh, these issues a lot of people have concerns about, and uh, it is once again a blessing to be with you, uh, Congressman Lamborn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper with Congressman Doug Lamborn uh, from Colorado. Thank you for joining me today. Doctor, it's good to be with you today. Well, thank you. We've, we've been dealing with a, a hot issue regarding UNRWA which uh, a lot of people are not aware of that, including General Kelly today in a White House press meeting. Uh, UNRWA stands for the United Nations Relief Workers Agency and schools that uh, we have evidence are inciting kids to violence against the Jews. Uh, Mr. David Bedeen has done a lot of research on this issue. I'm assuming that you are aware of Mr. David Bedeen. And, uh, and also uh, Gordon Klingensmith, who's from your state. Uh, we've been talking about this UNRWA issue. So, um, what are your concerns, uh, Congressman Lamborn, about UNRWA in regards to how it impacts Israel? Well, I'm really concerned. Uh, the U.S. taxpayer sends $300 million a year to UNRWA. And unfortunately, part of their activity includes allowing textbooks to be given to Palestinian children that inspire hatred toward Israelis and Jews. Mm -hmm. And when you look at these horrible examples of propaganda, there's no other word for it, in these textbooks, uh, they are hateful and misleading. And until UNRWA cleans up its act, I think that we should pull the funding to get their attention. Okay, now you're aware of Senator James Risch's efforts in uh, uncovering things. I don't know if you've seen Senator Risch's letters, but uh, he had given me a letter that he would be willing to pull funding to UNRWA, or to the UN specifically, uh, if we found their misuse of dollars. Now, Senator Risch requested from the General Accounting Office about uh, an investigation about this, about the funding to the UN for uh, investigators to Israel this summer. Uh, just, I think it was shortly after President Trump returned uh, from his trip, and I was there for his arrival there. and. Uh, so this report is due out in January or February from the General Accounting Office uh, about this funding to the UN. Uh, my concern, I think uh, many concerns, is uh, is there possible, could be a, any possible bias on the part of the General Accounting Office, those that be loyal to the UN, to not uh, really report the truth and give us uh, some, uh, not the accurate facts on this case. Uh, we, 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 we've known for clearly for a long time that, that the UN has not been very supportive of Israel, mm -hmm. and especially UNESCO and UNRWA and some other issues. Um, and uh, so, uh, you, are you aware of the General Accounting Office uh, 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 request for the investigation that Senator Risch initiated? Well, I didn't know all of those details, but I'm glad that that is happening. I appreciate what Senator Risch is doing, and I applaud that. And I will certainly second that over here in the House. Okay. Now, whether the GAO is biased or not, I, I hope that's not the case, but the proof will be in the pudding, and we'll see what they come up with in their report. But if they're being objective, they will see these horrible examples of textbooks. Uh, another thing that these textbooks do is they don't even recognize the state of Israel. They, right. they put Palestine mm -hmm. in every time it should say Israel. Mm -hmm. they're, they're in denial. It's, it's a willful blindness. And that's what they're teaching the impressionable uh, next generation of Palestinian children. As well as demonizing Jews, uh, even going to the extent of saying that they are enemies of Islam, 
because they oppose Jesus, Muhammad, and Moses. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't know Jews uh, did not support Moses in particular. <laughs> That's just a ludicrous statement to make. Okay. But, but, but all these charges get levied against the Jews, and they're unfair, and they're basically, they basically incite hatred, and they're based on falsehoods. So that, that, that should not be allowed in civilized discourse between reasonable people. And the UN should have a higher standard of how they spend the dollars that donor nations like the U.S. give them. You know, uh, the Prime Minister Netanyahu that I met uh, on May 8th there in, in Jerusalem, uh, he is concerned very much about the UNRWA issue and, of course, recently in a statement condemning UNRWA. And uh, it was uh, MK uh, Sharon Haskell that introduced me to the Prime Minister that day. She said, this is Dr. Harper that got called on at the White House the first week at Trump administration to ask about UNRWA. And uh, so it, it seems like things are greatly improving. The Prime Minister of Israel is very uh, thankful for President Trump's support of Israel. And now, you know, with this uh, polling out of UNESCO, I think the Prime Minister is very, uh, very hopeful that he will also uh, pull out of UNRWA funding as well. Well, I think that's a good step. Uh, we need to get the attention of the UN. They need to clean up their act, certainly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and UNESCO, unfortunately, is an agency within the UN that's one of the worst actors. They, they seem to be the most biased of all. So that's very unfortunate. Um, I'm really glad that Benjamin Netanyahu made that statement, and people like yourself were involved in that. The, 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 and the Trump administration, I think they are understanding the issue certainly better than the Obama administration, but as of yet, they haven't pulled the trigger in terms of withdrawing the funding. The latest I hear is that uh, as of about two weeks ago, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley to the U.N. confirmed that the money will be provided to the U.N. next year. So mm, until, wow. until that changes... Uh, we're not really getting their attention. Well, I've tried on several attempts to, to, to reach uh, Ambassador Nikki Haley to get an interview uh, mm-hmm. regarding this UNRWA issue. Mm-hmm. And uh, from what I understand, she had talked with about UNRWA with the Prime Minister as well. So um, there's, I'm confused about uh, this uh, reticence uh, to, um, you know, to pull that funding, you know, because we have all the evidence uh, about this, this uh, hateful curriculum. Well, it doesn't make any sense, and the money should be pulled. You do have career State Department people who are intent on preserving the status quo. And I think that that is so far carrying the day. Uh, That is so far overruling Nikki Haley and even the president. And they've got to exert themselves. And those of us in Congress need to continue our efforts. I know I have been and people like Senator Risch have been as well. But we want even more of our colleagues to join us and when we should raise our voice and we should present a united front to the UN saying this is a lot of money and some of it is being used for nefarious purposes. Well, there's another issue of reforming UNRWA. Uh, Mr. David Bedeen, we, we've been talking about this, the, uh, the, you know, the two choices of defunding versus reforming UNRWA. Um, his belief is that it'd be very difficult to uh, you know, more more acceptable actually to to reform UNRWA than just totally defund. Um, so there, there's a lot of serious issues surrounding this. Actually, this caught the attention of a UN spokesperson, a UNRWA sp- uh, spokesperson from Jerusalem. Shortly after my question that, that got aired on Jerusalem television, I get an email from an UNRWA spokesperson in Jerusalem that he wants to talk with me. To, so that so I can for them to share their side of the story on this issue, uh, not very not very comfortable in, in with contact with him because I've heard that he might have ties with Hamas. Well, if but, you, uh, if you can do that in a safe way, please do that and report back to us all on what what their side of the story is. I can't imagine any reasonable justification for doing what they're doing. Yeah, it's um, very upsetting. This has been going on for a long time. I've talked with a a lot of people about this. Several news uh, agencies have been covering about this issue of UNRWA, one of them them being the Daily Caller uh, on the the Christian news side. Um, uh, One One News Now is a Christian news service, and they uh, address in a report about this. 
And uh, so how long have you uh, known Mr. Bedin? How long have you been involved with this UNRWA issue and your concerns? Well, I've been involved in opposing what UNRWA is doing since my first days in Congress, 11 years ago. Oh, okay. And as you may know, I'm a, I'm a co-chairman of the Israel Allies Caucus and the Republican Israel Caucus. Mm -hmm. And in both of those forms, we have raised concerns about UNRWA and about the UN overall doing things that are biased and bigoted toward Israel. Uh, I've met David Bedeen more recently. Uh, he was in my office sitting right here where we're sitting okay. recently. And he and uh, Dr. Aaron Groys, I hope I said that correctly, mm -hmm. one is with the um, uh, Simon Wiesenthal Center and one's with the Center for Near East Policy Research and they presented me the report in draft form that they were going to give to the UN uh, later that week. And I, I, I've been able to examine it, and it's just heartbreaking how uh, totally biased these textbooks are being written to prejudice the minds of the young Palestinian children. Documented it chapter and verse. They give many examples and illustrations from virtually, and they've examined I think every single textbook that's used in the Palestinian territories. You know, part of this, the evidence of the hateful, uh, you know, perspective from UNRWA is, 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 I think I might have mentioned about the, the tunnel uh, of Hamas f found underneath uh, UNRWA school in Gaza. That's what really sparked the Prime Minister's uh, serious concern here. You know, that the, this UNRWA school specifically is being used by Hamas. And maybe, you know, with a tunnel under there, probably storing weapons or some other issues that are happening. So that's clear evidence of uh, a terrorist connection to the UNRWA school. That, and I don't know horrible. if they're aware that they've been doing this. You know, that, that's horrible. That, that's using school children, in effect, as human shields. Right. And we saw that in Gaza. Yeah. That's uh, totally Israel. unacceptable. Civilized people shouldn't do that. Yeah. So, you know, the, the concern about here is uh, what is most likely uh, to... Uh, be effective, the UNRWA reform or the UNRWA totally defunding. I know President Trump has talked about just pulling out of the UN. Well, certainly uh, the defunding needs to take place and maybe restored or pledged to restore if they can clean up their act, uh, although I'm not sure they can. So maybe mm -hmm. it should be a permanent defunding. Well, you know, and with if, if we did to pull, if we were to pull out of funding for UNRWA, then uh, other Arab nations, specifically Iran, would love, I would think, to support UNRWA because of, of, of the, the hatred, the hateful curriculum. Uh, Iran would fully support uh, hate of Israel. Well, unfortunately, that's probably true. And, uh, and if, to the degree that UNRWA does any kind of humanitarian aid uh, mixed in with the hateful things that they do, there will be people there to pick up the slack. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, that would be regrettable to see any humanitarian efforts in, but we've got to get their attention because this is going to just raise a new generation of Palestinian children who hate Jews irrationally. Well, I can understand some of the reticence uh, on President Trump's part, or Ambassador Nikki Haley, uh, to not go for total defunding now because of the humanitarian issue, mm -hmm. the concerns. Uh, my my uh, a key question here is about how are you going to verify uh, how are we going to uh, have proof that this money is not being siphoned off by Hamas for a hateful curriculum? We have to have, uh, in response to this, we have, we'd have to have uh, people on the streets at these schools monitoring all the actions of UNRWA, giving daily accounting. They would have to have uh, maybe informants in the UNRWA schools that they're not aware of that, uh, that would be holding the UNRWA schools accountable that would observe if any teacher were to present any text with a hateful curriculum or say anything negative and hate uh, towards the Jews, that's very expensive when you think about uh, monitoring the actions of all this. And uh, I think that's probably the overall concern. Well, you know, there's a very similar issue going on, and that is why I've introduced the Taylor Force Act in the House. Uh -huh. Lindsey Graham introduced that in the Senate. In the House, it's known as H.R. 1164. Okay. Taylor Force was a young man. He wasn't Jewish, but he was visiting Israel on an educational trip. He was a graduate of West Point, had 
done two tours of duty in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, and he was mur brutally murdered in a Palestinian terrorist attack uh, in March of 2016. And unfortunately, what happened is that the Palestinian Authority glorifies the uh, murderer in these cases. And they'll give stipends to the surviving family if, if the murderer dies, or if he ends up in prison, they'll give him cash awards. And they call it humanitarian aid, but, mm -hmm. uh, but you know that that's not true because they get more money the more Jews they kill. Okay, you know, along with that, you know, a prime minister of Israel has talked about the rewarding, uh, you know, the Palestinian Authority, uh, uh, President Abbas, of, uh, of awarding of continued uh, yes. uh, awarding of funds to these families that uh, families of terrorist members. Now, how can there be a, a, a peaceful arrangement between the Palestinian Authority and Israel if they continue to fund the, the terrorists and their families? That's exactly right, and and that's what this bill is aimed at. Because uh -huh. the common denominator with UNRWA and with the Palestinian Authority is that they're taking taxpayer dollars that the U.S. gives out of generosity and they're twisting it to uh, evil ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really a disturbing about what is happening here. And I think so uh, a, lot of, a lot of, I know a lot of church people are concerned about the, you know, Israel, very supportive of Israel. They pray for Israel. And, uh, you know, uh, we eagerly await to see what the general accounting office is going to do. Uh, we, we hope that uh, they will be objective and there will be a very useful report. Uh, I, I met with Senator Risch recently, uh, just uh, about a month or so ago, at a church, a Christians United for Israel event that he was speaking about, and to, to let him know the update on, on this issue. And uh, he was concerned about them not interviewing these key Israel leaders, uh, the Knesset, regarding UNRWA. To my knowledge, the Israel leaders have said they had never been interviewed by them. And to my knowledge, I don't know if the Prime Minister was interviewed by them. But I recommended to the GAO that they be interviewed because their voice is so important here. Well, absolutely. And I appreciate uh, what Senator Rich is doing. I appreciate your efforts, too, in uh, making these facts uh, available to the American people and, and to Christians. Uh, these are things people should be aware of. Yes, and, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's quite an honor here to be with you, uh, Congressman Lamborn, from the uh, wonderful state of Colorado, which our newspaper is distributed in, and uh, part of the wild, wild west. And uh, Gordon Klingensmith uh, would want me to tell you hello for him. Uh, how long have you known uh, uh, Gordon Klingensmith from Colorado? Well, I knew him before he got into the state legislature, and then he recently lost a race for a higher office. Uh, but I've, I've known him for several years. Okay. Uh, maybe six or seven years. Well, I did a, a, a report to today from the White House. Uh, uh, wasn't able to really highlight much about the UNESCO uh, poll out of President Trump. I didn't have time to read this report before this interview, but I, but I know that it, it very likely could be tied to the issue of reforming UNRWA or pulling funding from UNRWA. And so we just eagerly wait to see what happens next. So it's uh, uh, anything else that you might want to comment about this UNRWA issue for our listeners. Well, well, let me mention something on UNESCO, and I'm okay. glad that the president is taking a decisive step. This is a first and wonderful and much, I think, much needed step mm -hmm. to get the attention of the UN. I've introduced a bill, uh, HR 20, uh, excuse me, 263, the United States Sovereignty and Commercial Freedom Act, uh, which says that UN Security Council Resolution 2334, which passed a little while back, and deemed Israeli settlements on the West Bank and East Jerusalem illegal. And that's the, un, uh, the sad uh, incident where President Obama instructed our then ambassador, I think it was Susan Rice, to ab abstain from voting. And we mm -hmm. didn't veto this. And so it went forward. And I think that's a real blot on his record as president. But this bill, H.R. 263, says that that UN Security Council resolution is null and void. Oh, okay. Because we can't go around condemning Israel's settlements on the West Bank and in East Jerusalem. Um, this is something that should be negotiated. Uh, I think that they have a lawful claim 
to the land uh, that we're talking about. But in any event, it should be peacefully settled and outsiders shouldn't come in and dictate uh, what the, what Israel should do. Well, giving away, uh, giving away land has not brought more peace. Uh, the Israelis have seen very clearly. We think of it, especially pulling out of Gaza, it just became much more tr troublesome and Hamas taking over in, in, in large portions. And so um, a lot of people believe there will never be any peace uh, by Israel giving away any land. It's actually, it's weakened their, uh, weakened their situation and actually made embolden the terrorists to even take more, uh, to be more aggressive. Um, along with this UNESCO uh, issue and, and UNRWA issue, I think is, is a, a concern about how, um, you know, how this would play out, uh, you know, with, with long term, uh, if, you know, maybe after a while, if, if, if they clean up their act, that uh, we'd be willing to, to fund UNRWA or UNESCO again. Well, we should certainly give that to them as, an, as a carrot, but, uh -huh. but we need to apply the stick first, and we haven't even done that. No, very seriously. We haven't pulled the funding in the first place. No. And uh, now, um, there's an issue about the Taylor Force Act. I, I, I wanted to ask about, um, and you've talked with Mr. David Bedeen about this Taylor Force Act. Um, any concerns that he might have uh, about the Taylor Force Act? as it is right now. No, I think everyone's on board. Uh, initially, there was some hesitation that it might somehow promote instability, but mm -hmm. the more people have looked at it, they, they agree that it's something that needs to be done. Uh, the you, the Israel, uh, Israeli embassy has come out in favor of it, the, the Israeli government. Mm -hmm. There's a member, Elazar Stern, a member of the Knesset, who's introduced a very similar piece of legislation there that's getting broad support in the Knesset. And here in the House, uh, this bill has 144 co-sponsors. Okay. So uh, it's going to be coming up for hearing soon in the Foreign Relations Committee. So uh, it won't bring any kind of instability. It'll bring stability because it'll show the Palestinians that they need to clean up their act, especially when it comes to U.S. taxpayer dollars. But even more than that, they shouldn't be glorifying terrorism. And they do that when they give generous cash awards to terrorists who, who've killed his Israelis and they give them more more money the more Jews they kill. That's unacceptable. How, how likely is Taylor Force Act to, to pass in the Congress? I, I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. I feel good about it. So uh, especially in, in the House of Rep Representatives side, on the Senate side, what do you see happening? Yeah, the and, and there are some amendments that are being considered, so it's a little bit of a fluid situation in terms of the final language. We're still working on that. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I haven't asked uh, Senator Risch about his opinion on Taylor Force Act. Do you, do you know where he stands on that? I would have to think he'd be very supportive. Uh, okay. I think Lindsey Graham had a number of sponsors over in the Senate. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I have the number here in my notes. But um, they, they are getting good support over there. I believe it came out of committee already. Okay. And so it's advancing in the Senate as well. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. They have 27. At last reading, they had 27 co-sponsors in the Senate. Okay. Out of 100. All right. But they need at least how many? Uh, 60, and if there's a filibuster. But I, I think this is going to have broad support and bipartisan support. Okay. Well, um, I thank you for uh, joining me today about this very important issue about UNRWA, uh, as well as UNESCO. and. And uh, you know the way people are treating Israel, especially in the UN. Uh, so it, it is a blessing to be with your uh, 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 Congressman Lamborn from the wonderful state of Colorado, and a very beautiful state. Well, thank you for talking with me today. I uh, uh, was happy to discuss these very important issues with you, and keep up the great work that you're doing. Well, thank you. Once again, I'm Dr. Anthony Harper with the Intermountain Christian News and the Christian Newspaper Association with Congressman Doug Lamborn of Colorado here Thursday, October 12, 2017. And it has been quite a day, uh, Congressman Lamborn, for being uh, called on in the White House to, uh, to address uh, General Kelly about this issue. And, and uh, after this question today about UNRWA, now he'll have uh, uh, some, some opportunity to learn more about UNRWA and uh, hopefully uh, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders will be willing to address that with me very soon as well. So thank you.